Hi, so this is the second video on how to get started with your system understanding aid. In the first video, we talked about all of the instructions and re where to find some references, the fact that we're going to ignore the file cabinet, and just where to get the documents and stuff. So we're really going to focus today on doing the, in this video, doing the first transaction. So hopefully you've already downloaded your transaction list. So here's all the individual documents. We have our journals, our ledgers, and that's all we really need later for, uh, for right now. Later, we will use all these. Uh, as we also have our check figures here, which they're going to be out of balance because we haven't done anything. So all of our check figures are going to be incorrect, but use those. We also have hints, which you'll find after you hit auto grade. So once you complete all the transactions, hit auto grade here at the bottom. It will update your check figures uh, once again if they weren't already, and it will give you hints of some potential issues. You can hit auto grade three times for each part. So we're right now in December 16th through the 22nd. So for each one, so we can hit three times for this and then three times again for the 23rd through the 31st. All right, so I have my transaction list already here. I have it uh, here uh, downloaded. So once again, everybody's transaction list is different. So the first transaction, and if this one, if this one seems long, this one is the longest one. So we're going to start off with the longest one. You have one more very similar to it later, another sale. But keep in mind, this is going to go just a little slower. Uh, pause the video as you are doing these things, and that should help. Okay? So let's get started. So what we did is we received a customer purchase order. So a customer wants to buy something from us, and that's Rosemont University. So we want to approve her credit, their credit. Um, we're going to ship everything except for 45 shoulder pads. I believe they bought 75, and we are going to only ship them 45. We only have 45 in inventory. So then we have our shipping information. We will need this to carry uh, to complete the bill of lading. One of the things we'll want to do is verify their credit limit, and I'll show you how to find that. And then we'll make several entries. So we're going to use quite a few documents. Um, for this one, it is going to be a little bit of, uh, let's say, a challenge in navigating the screens and keeping them open. So we'll try to show you a few tips there. Okay, so I'm going to minimize that for now. I have all my PDFs here, my price list, etc., my project instructions. I won't be bringing up this transaction list because I actually do have a hard copy in front of me. Okay, so I'm actually going to close this just to keep one less thing. And I'm also going to close the project instructions. I will go look, we'll look at the flow charts. So it gives a hint that um, we want to look, use the flow charts. So here's, we're making a sale. A customer wants to buy something. So we received a customer purchase order. So that means it's a sale for us. So we're looking for a sale. We have, we're going to receive a customer purchase order. Okay, we have that. So this means it's a document. So the first thing that customer purchase order is document four. And the first thing we want to do is Kramer approves the credit and initials it on the customer purchase order. So I'm going to go over to my SUA system and we want to open this customer purchase order from Rosemont. So I'm going to go ahead and click on edit. I can double click on it and that goes to a new tab. So it just depends on what you want to do. And actually, I think I might want to go ahead and double click on it for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and double click and notice it brings up a new window. Which we can then kind of move off to the side. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is 
to approve the credit. So let's go ahead and look at the subsidiary ledger. And this is, I'm sorry, I clicked on accounts payable. We're going to go to accounts receivable because it is a customer. And we're going to go to Rosemont. So we have a Rosemont here. We're going to expand it. I would make a note of this 406 right now because we need to know what the customer number is. So note that 406. And they have a credit limit of 125. And they currently have a balance here of, it appears to be zero in our case. Okay, so that means we will go ahead and proceed with the sale as long as the purchase order is less than 125000 Now that is not on this document. But this is where you can use a little bit of estimating. So hopefully you have your price list in front of you. So I have my price list. And uh, one thing they're looking at is, for example, shoulder pads. They are about $90 a piece or $123 a piece, $75. So that's going to be... Um, about $900 right off hand. We're nowhere, if you kind of look at the rest of the price list and the quantities, we're nowhere near a hundred grand and their credit limit's 125 and they have a balance of zero. So we are good to go. All right. So see this gray square. So it said, one of the things it said in our flow chart is Ray Kramer and uh, approves the credit and initials and keep track of initials versus sign or just the name. So I'm going to see this gray area. This is where he would initial. So for all things that you're signing, we're going to right click and we're going to say initials and RK for Ray Kramer. All right. And right now that is all we need to do on that. So we're going to go ahead and click save. Now we will want to keep it open, so I'm just going to minimize it for now because we will need that at some point. All right, let's go ahead back to our flowchart. Okay, so what we need to do is go, what we're going to do is pick the items from inventory. So this is where we tell somebody from the warehouse to go get those items from inventory. But the thing we want to note here is we are not shipping everything. So if we look at, and I accidentally closed the purchase order, so I'm going to just go ahead and open that back up. We ordered 75, but you have a specific amount that we can only ship. So we're short shipping them. So we need to keep that in mind. So look at your transaction sheet and see how many shoulder pads you are shipping. So keep that in mind, okay? And maybe just make a little note that we they ordered 75 shoulder pads and we are only shipping, in my case, 45. Okay, so we've done that. We now need to go ahead and prepare a bill of lading. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go under Documents. And we are going to prepare bill of lading. We want to select, make sure you select the first one. We have three bill of lading that we're going to do. Select the first one. So double click on that. All right. So this is a bill of lading. A bill of lading is an agreement with the shipping company. Okay. So what we need here is who we're shipping it to. And that we are going to get off of our customer purchase order. So here's where it's nice to either have two screens or you are able to kind of just rearrange the screens, uh, you know, window by window. I actually have two screens, so I'm going to move my purchase order off to the other screen. 
So let's go ahead and fill this out. The ship two will be Rosemont University. The address is going to be 121 East Front Street. We're going to do this in Louisville. Kentucky. And our zip code is 40202. Okay. And that's okay if you just want to copy this information for right now because this will be the same for everybody. We get the shipper number uh, from our transaction list. So once again, I have this printed out and here it gives the carrier number on my hard copy. So that's the shipper number 2154. Today's date, if you look under the second column in your transaction list, you will see that is December 16th and all of our transactions are in 2022. And then it has um, the carrier as allied trucking. And what we also want to say is the vehicle number is also given and it is truck number 2961XZ. The route is also given on the transaction list and that is express. So I'm going to pause here for a second. You may pause the video and then we'll come back and add the, the rest. Okay, hopefully you got that top part filled in and hopefully you found it on your transaction sheet, which you have printed. So all of that is given. Okay, so next we want to put in the number of shipping units. So at this point, we are not concerned with the number of individual items. So the number of football helmets, the number of shoulder pads. We want to know how many boxes. So you may put multiple football helmets in a box. So on your transaction sheet, it gives you the number of cartons and the number of, so, the, so there's five cartons of gold and rim sets. And I think this might is the same for everybody, but check these numbers. And it's 42 pounds per carton. Okay. So at 42 pounds a carton, so five times 42 is our total weight. So we're going to say five. So we have five and it's going to be cartons of gold and rim sets. And the weight once again is five cartons times uh, 42 pounds. And I can't record a video and do math at the same time. So I am getting out my calculator here just on my phone. Five times 42 is 210. And the rate per 100 pounds is 37. So that goes ahead and calculates automatically. Then we have two cartons of backboards. And it's 123 pounds per carton. So that's 240, 46. And once again, that is 37. And then we have nine cartons of shoulder pad sets. Please forgive any typos at this moment here. And that is 30 pounds per carton. So that's 270 pounds. And once again, our rate stays the same. And then we have four cartons of football helmets. Okay. And four times 32 is 128. And that's going to be at 37. Once again, these numbers of number of cartons and your weights may be vary by person. So please check your individual transaction list. Okay. So our, what we want to do is mark here that this is collect. 
We're going to put those both. Uh, then we want to say our carrier, once again, is Allied Trucking. And the person, the truck driver is John Aarons. So I'm going to put that there. And at this point, you also want to put in the date. Once again, this is the 16th and you want to put in hyphens. And if you look at the top of the flow chart, it, we are Nancy Ford at this point. So we want to go ahead and put in Nancy Ford. And it looks like it's asking us to right click. And this time it just needs a name, not a signature. We're going to say Nancy Ford. Normally here you would go ahead and save. I'm not going to save just in case I need to do another demonstration. Um, that And that will kind of prevent me from doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel. Go ahead and save yours. And this may take a second. All right, let's go to the flow chart and look at what we need to do next. All right, so next we go here. Next, we need to prepare a pre-numbered sales invoice. So we want to go to, and we want to do a charge sales invoice. So make sure you get the one that says 731 because you need to do these in order. That's kind of critical with the auto grading. All right. So the charge sales invoice, let's start here. So we're going to enter in a bunch of information. I'm not going to go ahead and type that at the moment. So you will get this address once again from the purchase order. Okay. The bill to and the ship to are the same. The invoice date you'll get from, um, that would be today, the 16th. And you, Nancy Ford prepared it. The credit terms are on here. I'm going to try to get that visible here. I'll just make it a little bit bigger. So here's your terms. So you'll put those there. Uh, then the purchase order number. So once again, you want to get that purchase order number um, here, which is right there is the purchase order number. Um, signed by who signed it at the bottom and it was shipped via and what we want to put there is we actually shipped it via uh, allied trucking so instead of putting allied trucking there go ahead and put interstate freight so it's more of a type rather than the company. And that bill of lading is the bill of lading number that we just filled out. So it is 6890BR. Zero BR. Okay. And then the signed by. Once again, we get that signed by from, oops, wrong document, that here would be Mary Jenkins. Okay. All right. So that should be everything on the top. Then I'm going to move this off to my second screen again. Then we want to look at the purchase order. So it says in the first line, we ordered 25. And then we're going to use this drop down to say we ordered BB267, and that fills in the description. And we ordered, in this case, 25 and shipped 25. Then you would do the same for the backboard. We ordered 20, and that is BB358. Once again, I'm getting this from the purchase order, and we shipped 20. You will want to get the price from your price list. So once again, this will vary. So the first one was gold and rim set. Right there, our price is 131, for example. 
in my and this will vary for you so do not use that number we'll let you do the rest the next thing we ordered was 75 shoulder pads so they ordered 70, 75 we're not able to ship those so we're going to put back order bo for back order and that number is fb 027 and we are only able to ship in my case 45 okay so we're going to leave that and then I told you to write down earlier the customer account and that was 406 so we would put that in by the way you have one more item to enter I will let you do that I will pause now go ahead and pause the video and complete the rest of your invoice okay we're coming back hopefully that I, I know you could pause it. So before we save it, it says Adams. So Jim Adams reviews uh, reviews and the invoice and supporting documents for accuracy and then initials. So let's go ahead and initial that. So once again, we need that invoice verify. We need to go to initials. I right clicked, went to initials and selected J uh, Jim Adams. And I'm having a little bit of problems here because it wants to go into the next screen. There we go. So that's just a problem with my screen there. Now we can go ahead and save. Once again, I'm not going to save in this video just because I can only do it once within the system. So I'm going to cancel, but go ahead and save. Okay, so let we're moving down that uh, flow chart here. As I said, don't worry, this is the longest one. So Jim Adams has initialed the invoice. We're now going to ship the goods to the customer. So we're actually not going to do that because I don't have any basketballs on stock for you. And here it says where all the documents would go to. So, for example, what the bill of lading, one's going with the carrier, one's going to the customer. Some of these are going on to the next page. Um, some are, so then our sales invoice, one goes to the customer, one's mailed to the customer. So you see where they're going, but we're not going to worry about filing them in our case. Okay, and here we're going to go to the next page. So this is the next page in the instruction in the flow charts. So we need to make our accounting entry. So far, we've only done our documents. So is it a cash or credit sale? Well, it's it's not cash. So we need to make an entry in the sales journal and the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, and then we're done because then it ends here. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize that. So the first thing is we want to go to our sales journal. So let's go ahead and click that sales journal. Now, I didn't complete the in invoice because I didn't. Uh, so hopefully you've noted, go back into the invoice that you had created and write down the total. Okay, so go back to this charge invoice. Once again, I didn't save it you want to write down this total sale. Okay. So now we're going to go into the journals. It said we needed to make an entry in the sales journal. So looking at the sales journal, before you even look at that, we want to make a new entry. So ignore this form. What is an entry for making a sale on credit? What do we debit? What do we credit? So we debit accounts receivable and we credit sales. So if you look at this kind of worksheet, you have your possible debit accounts would be either a sales return or accounts receivable. And our traditional uh, accounts that we use for credit are either an accounts receivable for a return or sales. So we use that for either. So what we need to do is make a new line. So we're going to go ahead and click on edit. And we, I would recommend within the journals and the ledgers using the calendar. So on December 16th, and this is to Rosemont. And it was invoice 731. And that subsidiary count, we already looked it up, was 406. And then you would put under accounts receivable, 
the total num the amount that you had on your invoice, and this will be different for everybody, and the total amount under the sales account. Okay? And that will automatically save. Then we need to make sure we post this in our accounts receivable ledger. So I'm going to expand that and I'm going to go to accounts receivable ledger. Okay. And that takes a second. I'm going to expand Rosemont. And then I'm going to add a new line. Once again, use the calendar, December 16th. I'm going to put in an invoice and it was number invoice number 731. Once again, I will put in my debit amount for a new invoice and then I will save. All right. Now that we've posted it here, let's go back to the sales journal. And we would have that line for Rosemont, which I did not save it. You will then go ahead and click on the green check to denote that you posted it into the accounts receivable subsidiary account. And then we are actually done with our transaction. Okay. Um, the next thing on the, the flow chart is a bad debt, but we don't have a bad debt. So that's kind of our signal to that we stop here. Okay, so that really helps, hopefully helps you show the first transaction. Um, and then you just proceed with the rest of the transactions through the 22nd and then make sure you auto grade.